Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a driving and racing game in Unity and welcome to episode 21. This episode is going to be all about positioning because it's not difficult but it's kind of cool and interesting how it can be done and the physics of how it works. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click that bell icon to stay up to date with everything I have on this channel, it'll be well worth it for your Unity knowledge. With that in mind, let's get to work. So what we're going to do is theoretically create some triggers on the AI car which will determine if we pass it or if it passes us and we'll have to use some tags in the meantime. So firstly let's actually attach a game object to our car which will allow us to position the car whether it's first or second in this case. So to do that let's right click on our car, 3D object and cube. Now this cube is going to be what actually determines what position we are so I'm going to make it a bit thinner than what it is so we'll have 0 0.25 for now in fact no not on the y we'll have it one on the y but we'll have it 0 0.25 on the z i'm going to bring it up above the car and i think for convenience we'll actually have the green car body active so we can actually race with a car so let's take this cube here bring it a little down there and i'm going to turn off the mesh renderer now I did say this was going to be all about tags, so we're going to have to add a tag in. Now we've dealt with tags before, so we know how they work. We can go up here to tag, click untagged, and then click add tag, click plus, and we'll call this tag car pause, short for car position. So then head back to our game object, which is right here, and then set the tag to car pause. And let's right click, rename, and call this car position. So we just have to remember that this car position is relative to this tag right here. So let's write a script and there's going to be two scripts at least in this one uh, but let's kind of keep everything grouped together I think just in case. So let's create a new folder and have it as positioning and in here let's create the first C sharp script and we'll call it pause up and let's head into Visual Studio. So we're going to do two scripts. One is going to be kind of the inverse of the other, but it's going to be the same kind of script. So what we'll need to do firstly is because we're going to be dealing with UI to determine whether we are first or second, we'll have to have a namespace saying using Unity Engine.UI semicolon. And we can get rid of void start void update and any annotations. We'll need just one variable and that variable is going to be the UI that we'll create to say on screen first or second. So public game object and we'll have it position display semicolon. So I think before we go any further let's create this position display so we know what's going on. So uh, onto game object, onto UI and onto text. And let's double click on text, get it into position. And let's have a look on our screen. Where can we put our position first or second? Should we put it in the middle up here? I think I'll put it in the middle. Just to, uh, no, nothing in the middle, so we may as well. Zero out the position, so let's get it how we want it to look. Uh, by default, we'll have this say first place. And let's change the color to white and uh, we don't have any font so we'll just leave us that for now and let's change this to 34 obviously we'll need to center it in the alignment here and then let's click the rec tool and let's just expand and place in the middle there so first place perfect that's what we are so let's right click and rename the position text uh, rename pause display so let's head back to our script so position display and all we need here really is rather than void on trigger enter we need the car to either exit a certain point so for example if it exits the back trigger at the front it then becomes first so what we need to do is void on trigger exit and it will auto fill that but we do not need it to be private and you'll notice here 
in the parentheses, we have a collider, other. We need to remember this other here. You can change this if you want to, but we'll stick with what it's given us. And the idea is, we need to say if, in brackets, other dot tag is equal to whatever we set the ta uh, tag as before, which was, if I can remember, it was car pause. So we need to type in there, car pause, open curly bracket. So just to be clear, the reason why we do use a tag here is because we don't want other things to com collide with this trigger. We don't want the finish line to collide with it. We don't want the race positions to collide. We don't want the terrain to collide. We only want whatever is tagged as car pause to be able to collide with this and run the code. So if it does collide with it, what we need to do is change the display position here. So position display dot get component and in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text and we make that equal to first place quote semicolon and save the script now the idea of this is it that's all it is to it we're passing this trigger we're exiting whatever trigger it may be so it's going to be a thin trigger and at that point we actually become first place so we're telling the game that we're in first place so now let's create the inverse of that so right click create c sharp script and we'll call this pause down so open this one up in Visual Studio. Once again, we do this separately because it's going on two separate objects. And uh, we'll need using Unity Engine dot UI semicolon. And the code is going to be the same. So we can take all this code in the class and place it in the pause down script. And we just need to change this one here to say second place and save the script so hopefully you guys have realized how this is going to work now so the idea is we have two triggers on the car so let's go find our car right here so we're going to have a trigger at the front although technically in the middle we're going to have it at the front and at the back so one here one here now let's create them right click 3d object cube and let's bring this cube up to about there and let's close it down a little so let's have this as 0.25 and just move it slightly to the front now what we need to do is tick is trigger and then we need to adjust the size of this to cover the space that you would expect our car to be able to pass through so we can stretch on the x to let's say 30 maybe maybe 40 we'll just see and also on the y to round about five now it looks a little bit silly at the moment but i'm going to leave it like that because it's going to prove a point of our position in just a second so i'm going to right click rename up pause on that one hold control press d to duplicate and bring it towards the back of the car but just intersecting with this one here and then call this one down pause and the same applies it's still a trigger so what we need to do is drag the pause down script onto down pause and the pause up script onto up pause and on both of them we just need to drag and drop our text which tells us our position which is pause display so drag and drop up pause drag and drop and i'm going to save that scene so i'm going to leave at least for now these colliders, the actual triggers, I'm going to leave them with a the mesh on. Reason being is that we can see in the little mini map that we have how this is actually working. So let's find our waypoint car. There we are. So there are the triggers. Now let's press play and have a look. So you can see down here in the mini map how this is working. So our car, our AI car, has just overtaken us and we're now in second place. So if we drive, yep, not very good. However, if we try driving again and stay in front, we will continue to be in first place. So he's gone a little bit faster. 
Oh, we're still in first. Let's let him overtake us. If he gets off us. Oh, now we've both crashed. But you can see the idea of what's happening here. Let's try one more time. I'm going to let him go off on his own and then we'll catch up. Off he goes. Or off we go. So there we go. He's now in first and we're in second. So let's try and race to overtake. Providing he doesn't have any accidents. You can still see we're in second place. So that's how it all works now. As long as those two colliders stretch across the track enough to actually collide with things, we don't have a problem. So you may need to take them both and just change the scale to, let's say, 50. But then when you turn off Mesh Renderer and press play, we can see it looks no different. However, the first and second place will work. So let's let him overtake. And there we go, we're in second. So let's try and get past him. Now we're in first. Now we're in second. That is how the positioning works. And yes, we only have two cars, but the same principle will apply if you have more cars. You just need to manipulate, modify, and adjust your script to be relative to the amount of cars you have in your race. So like I say, positioning isn't difficult at all. It is it is pretty easy once you get used to it. So next episode is going to be the last episode. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at our settings deep in the game and we're going to build the actual game to be playable. And, you know, I'll give you some more information about where to go from that point onwards. And you'll be able to, well, with what you've got so far, you should be able to build a car, racing game, driving it, whatever. No problem. So, guys, that is that. We're pretty much almost done with this series. So, don't forget, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch up with everything I have. And, guys, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.